One of the biggest problems in the crypto space right now is that separate blockchains can't communicate with each other. That makes transferring tokens and information between blockchains hard and expensive, this problem is known as the interoperability problem, and Cosmos is one of the most important projects that are trying to solve this problem. Welcome to Cryptobi, where we explain cryptocurrencies and DeFi topics in the most simple and beginner-friendly way. In this video, you will know what is Cosmos and how it actually works, and at the end, we will talk about some tokenomics of the Atom token. So, let's get started. So what is Cosmos? Cosmos is a network of blockchains that can connect to each other. So it is not just one blockchain, it is an ecosystem that contains a lot of blockchains that can communicate with each other and easily transfer information and tokens. So how are all these blockchains connected? Well, let's think about it. If we have five blockchains and we want to connect them all together, what can we do? We can create a bridge between each two blockchains. So in this case, we need to create 10 bridges or connections, but the real problem with this method is that the number of needed bridges increase greatly as we increase the number of blockchains. For example, if we have 100 blockchains and we want to connect them together, we will need to create 4,950 bridges, which is not achievable at all. So Cosmos has a pretty innovative solution for this problem. Instead of connecting each two blockchains, Cosmos uses a model called the hub and zones model. Simply, a hub is a central blockchain specifically created to connect blockchains together. And a zone is a normal blockchain, like the five blockchains we want to connect in our example. These zones are independent blockchains, and each blockchain of them has its native token. And we will talk about these zones a bit more in a minute. But for now, we can create a hub and connect all the five blockchains to this hub. So now, they can transfer information and tokens between each other through the hub. In this model, we need just five connections, and once any new blockchain connects to this hub, it can communicate with all the five other zones. In the case we have 100 blockchains, we will also need just 100 connections to the hub, so each blockchain needs just one connection to the hub to be able to connect with any other blockchain connected to the same hub. The Cosmos Hub was the first blockchain created in the Cosmos ecosystem. It was created to connect other blockchains together, and its native token is the Atom token. So this blockchain is what people refer to as the Cosmos blockchain. But the Cosmos ecosystem as a whole is a lot of blockchains, not just one. You might have heard that Cosmos is called by the team the Internet of Blockchains. So, just like your computer needs internet connection to connect with other computers to transfer documents, music, pictures, or anything else, Blockchains can also connect to the Cosmos network to transfer information and tokens between each other. So, the team sees that Cosmos acts as the internet to the blockchains. So, what exactly are all these zones? Well, the Cosmos team sees that when any decentralized app grows and needs to scale, it will eventually need its own separate blockchain. On Ethereum, for example, the dApps are created as smart contracts on top of the Ethereum blockchain, which makes them very easy to develop but it is not that flexible for developers, and the performance of the app can decrease significantly if there is a congestion on the Ethereum blockchain. So it is just like what happened with CryptoKitties in 2017, it started as a dApp on the Ethereum blockchain, but it grew so popular that it caused a congestion on the Ethereum blockchain for days, and the gas fees at some point were higher than the actual asset you want to buy. Although it was back to normal after a few days, still after a while, the developers started creating a new blockchain specifically for the game, which is the Flow blockchain. So, Cosmos does exactly that. It allows developers to create new blockchains designed to run one application only. They call it app-specific blockchains, and the thing here is that they make creating these blockchains very easy with something called the Cosmos SDK. Don't be confused with the name, it is actually pretty simple. SDK is an acronym for a software development kit. So the Cosmos SDK is simply a set of ready-to-use modules or parts developers can use to create their blockchains without starting from scratch. It is like having a proof-of-stake blockchain as a template, and then developers can customize things like the validators, staking, the native token, and the governance of the blockchain.
So, the developers can have full flexibility to use whatever modules they need, and customize anything else. It is kinda like website templates, you can use whatever parts you want, and customize anything else. This SDK significantly reduces the time and work needed to develop new blockchains, and its use is not just for the app-specific blockchains, it was used to create some very popular blockchains like the Binance Smart Chain and Polygon. Let's now talk about the consensus mechanism of the Cosmos Hub and these blockchains created with the Cosmos SDK. So, the Cosmos Hub and the Cosmos SDK blockchains use a form of proof-of-stake called Tendermint. So, like in any proof-of-stake mechanism, validators need to lock up tokens as a collateral for any misbehavior. This is known as staking. The Cosmos Hub has Atom as its staking token, so the Cosmos Hub validators need to lock up Atom tokens. Other blockchains in the Cosmos ecosystem have other staking tokens, like the BNB on the Binance Smart Chain. Being a validator is not the easy for normal individuals, it requires technical knowledge and maintenance, so, people who don't want to do this, but still want to earn rewards, can give their tokens to a validator and earn a portion of the rewards. This is known as delegation. There is no minimum stake needed in the Cosmos Hub, but, for a validator to be able to add new blocks and earn the rewards, it needs to be in the top 175 validators by stake. Any lower than this, the validator won't be an active validator and won't earn rewards. So, that means that currently, there are 175 validators only securing the Cosmos Hub, which is a fairly low number, but it increases by 13% every year, with a maximum of 300 validators. Let's now get to how Tendermint actually works. What happens is that the voting power of each validator is calculated, which is how much a validator owns out of all stake tokens. The higher the voting power a validator has, the more blocks it gets to add. For example, if the total staked tokens of the 175 validators is 200 atom and your stake is 10 atom, then you will be chosen to add 5% of all the blocks. The validator that is chosen to add the current block is called the proposer. So after a validator is chosen as the proposer, it starts working by choosing some pending transactions and adding them to a block and then sending it to the other validators on the network. Now, we have two rounds of voting on the block. First, each validator, including the proposer, have to say if it saw the proposed block, and whether it accepts it or not. If a validator saw the block, and it is a valid block, then it needs to say provote. If it is an invalid block, or if the validator didn't see it at all, it needs to say provote nil. That was the first round. In the second round, each validator has to wait and see what other validators say. If a validator receives provoke messages from more than two-thirds of the other validators, it needs to send a pre-commit message. In our example here, we have nine validators, so two-thirds of them equals six, so when a validator receives a provoke from seven validators or more, it can send a pre-commit. But if a validator didn't receive provokes from seven validators or more, during the time allowed, it needs to send pre-commit nil. Now, all the validators need to do the same, when this current block has pre-commit messages from seven or more validators, it gets accepted and added to the blockchain. So, as you can see, Tendermint is still secure and working as long as the number of malicious validators is less than one-third of all the active validators. So, it is very fast and very secure, and according to the Cosmos team, it can theoretically process up to 10,000 transactions per second. An important point here before we move on is that each blockchain that uses Tendermint has to have its own group of validators. The Cosmos Hub validators secure the Cosmos Hub only. Although Tendermint was created by the Cosmos team, it is open source and comes with the Cosmos SDK. And the developers can modify it however they like for their blockchains. For example, the Polygon team modified it to their blockchain and called their version Peppermint. So the Cosmos ecosystem gives great flexibility to developers. They are not even restricted to one programming language, they can program their blockchain in any language and connect it to Tendermint using a protocol called the ABCI protocol. Let's now get to how the blockchains are connected in the Cosmos ecosystem. So, in Cosmos, the blockchains connect together with the IBC protocol. IBC is an acronym for Interblockchain Communication Protocol. This protocol is a module in the Cosmos SDK. So, 
All Cosmos SDK blockchains can connect to each other, but that doesn't mean they have to, developers can choose whether to enable the IBC protocol or not. This IBC protocol can connect between any two proof-of-stake blockchains, and it works similar to how wrapped tokens work, and we actually have a video about them. But let's go over a quick overview. Let's say that you want to transfer 10 Atom tokens from Zone X to Zone Y, and the two zones are connected to the Cosmos hub. First, your 10 Atom tokens will be locked up on Zone X. Now, we need a way to send a message to Zone Y, to let it know that your 10 Atom tokens were locked on Zone X. That is where the Cosmos Hub comes into play, the message is transferred from Zone X to Zone Y through the Cosmos Hub, and when it reaches Zone Y, new 10 wrapped Atom tokens are created. These wrapped Atom tokens are not the real tokens you had on Zone X, they are a representation of them, and they have the same value as the original tokens. So, what about proof-of-work blockchains that are not compatible with the Cosmos Hub like Bitcoin and Ethereum? For Cosmos to be really interoperable, it has to be able to connect with all types of blockchains, not just proof of stake. Well, Cosmos actually solves this problem using something called a peg zone. A peg zone is a blockchain that tracks or monitors another blockchain. For example, if you want to send some tokens from the Ethereum blockchain to the Cosmos hub, you will first need to send these tokens to be locked in a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain. The peg zone is tracking the Ethereum blockchain, so it will know when the tokens are locked, but as you may know, the latest blocks in proof-of-work blockchains can be reversed. So the peg zone waits for some blocks to be added after this block, before it can consider the lockup of your token's transaction final or confirmed. Let's say that it waits for 10 blocks, so after these 10 new blocks, the peg zone will create new wrapped tokens on the Cosmos network. These tokens are also a representation of the real tokens, like we said earlier. Let's now talk about the tokenomics of the Atom token, which is the native token of the Cosmos hub. So, Atom has three uses, first it is staked by validators to secure the Cosmos hub and earn rewards, which are also paid in Atom. But that's for the Cosmos hub only, other zones have other staking tokens to reward the validators like what we said earlier. Secondly, it can be used to pay the transaction fees on the Cosmos hub, but also the point here is that you can pay the fees with also other coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Dogecoin. Finally, it is a governance token, so if you are staking Atom, you have the right to propose or vote on any changes that may happen to the Cosmos hub and how it operates. So, as you can see, Atom doesn't have much utility as of right now aside from staking and governance. Atom has no maximum supply, so it is an inflationary token, which means that its supply increases each year as new tokens are minted to reward the validators. The inflation rate of Atom has a range between 7% and 20%. It depends on how much of the total supply is staked. When the staked tokens represent more than 6-6% of the total supply, the inflation rate is close to that 7%. But when the staked tokens are less than 6-6% of the total supply, the inflation rate starts getting close to 20%. This basically means that the network gives more rewards when the staked atom is less than 6-6% of all the supply, and this is done to encourage more people to stake their tokens to secure the network. So, looking at these tokenomics, it can be obvious that it is not a good idea to just hold atom and not stake it. So, currently Atom doesn't capture much value of the ecosystem and the large number of projects in it. But in the near future, there are two changes that may increase the demand for the Atom token. First, the Cosmos Hub may start charging fees on any IBC routing activities. Remember when we said that the Cosmos Hub allows any two blockchains to connect using the IBC protocol? In the future, the Cosmos Hub will charge fees, and these fees will go to Atom validators and stakers. The second change is the shared security, which means that new small blockchains in the Cosmos ecosystem can rent security from the Cosmos hub. For example, Zone X that has currently no validators can pay the Cosmos hub to get security from its validators, which means that the Cosmos hub validators will verify the transactions of Zone X. The fees paid by these blockchains will go to the validators and stakers of the Cosmos hub. These two features are still not implemented as of the time of this video, but when they get implemented, they will increase the staking rewards of Atom, which theoretically should increase the demand for it.
At the end of this video, we hope you learned what you need to know about Cosmos and how it works, and if you liked our video and want to reward our hard work, hit the like button, let us know in the comments if you have any questions and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss our new videos. Thanks for watching.